It's another day in paradise. Welcome. This is the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about inside my portfolio. As you can see, inside my Robinhood portfolio, I'm going to give you guys five new assets that's added to my portfolio. As you can see, I'm at $10,700. So let me go here right quick to the all. Um, so my all, oh, market's closed, huh? Well, look at that. So I've noticed like on Robinhood when it goes to white to black. So right now it's closed, but as you can see here, <clears throat> my cryptos, um, they're still going. So before I jump into um, what's inside my portfolio, my current balance is 10000 700 I just want to say like once you hit your first goal I think this is I think this should be everybody's first goal I you know it's like okay you want to go to it you want to hit a million first get to your first thousand and then thousand to five five thousand five thousand to ten thousand and that's where I'm at so now I'm feeling I'm going straight my goal now is uh twenty thousand so I got the confidence building what I have now. So this is pretty much uh, my experience on the stock market because I just had to go over it again. The stock market was the most scariest thing to me. I remember growing up, like I've studied everything, but the stock market scared the shit out of me. But now I, you know, now I see a lot of uh, people there, there's even as adults and even elderly, they're afraid of the stock market, but it's like you fear what you don't understand. So. I started to break down, started studying like what the the, the stock market is, you know, because my fascination was just how things work. So now that I found out like how things work, like I have no like it's just another skill under my under my belt. So, um, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I I don't feel like eh, hey, whip de do because I think in my past. I've had more money than this and you know I, it, I've already got to this point but in other ways and I'll just blow it but like to actually just t to build something you know to construct it cuz this is I'm building this uh brick by brick I'm going to show like currently I have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so I have six cryptocurrencies which are six assets and then I have stocks over here there's 135 stocks that I have I'm loving this game. And these all consist of index funds, ETFs, bonds, ETFs, precious metals, ETFs, currency, ETFs, and REITs. And I'm and what my dividends now, um what I'm trying to do is every month, well every every quarter go up to get paid ten dollars more. Um but since I'm still building the foundation i won't really see like once i start building the wall up then i'll see like okay what companies i'm gonna put more laser focus in because I, I have pretty much the foundation of the stock market but then i can like look at it and like look at companies like ooh, this company's paying this you know for example i'm noticing a lot of companies between 20 and 40 dollars they're paying just as much as you would pay for a company that you're paying like 100 to 200 dollars they get up the same type of dividends so I've noticed companies in those ranges. So that's why I'm learning in, in by me building my foundation. I'm seeing that already in the foundation. So I'm tweaking the foundation now before I build up. So this is going to be everlasting. It's going to be Palace 8008. That's what I'm going to call it. You know, it's gonna all, this is all part of the DNA Level C 1978 Index Fund. So this is what I'm creating. The DNA level C, 1987, is this is an index fund. So it's pretty much, it's going to cover all the stocks. Pretty much the foundation is going to be every every company in the sector, in pretty much in the stock market globally. And then once I can see the numbers, then I'm like, okay, let me start building the wall off of the foundation. Right now I'm tweaking it. So I'm at 135 plus the, the crypto. Um, let me go all the way down. See, I'm all the way down to a a buck this is so fun 
Like, this is so fun. And then my watch list is just nasty. It's just motivating. So I got about 50 on, on there. And I got to give props to Robin Hood once once again for teaching me this, this game. <laughs> I just can't believe, like, people are so afraid of it. And, I, and now it's like, phew, and trying to get people to to be brave brave enough to go into it and because your money's working for you and then it's just some kind of connection you get like you own a piece of that company you see it like mcdonald's wingstop uh nike um what else adidas nintendo um companies like um banco santander that's like a bank in spain uh bbva that's a, a bank in argentina uh, like the National Bank of China, that's in China. I got, I'm, I'm buying Chinese banks. Canadian banks are nice. Australian banks are nice. Um, not too much Europe for some. I mean, but I'm, I've invested in them because I know when they rebound, boom, it's gonna shoot back up. So they're pretty much they're in a, they're in a correction, and we're headed for one too. So um, that's why I like bouncing back and forth to country to country because I get more of a balanced balance feel of the world instead of just you're always in one place you're not going to get the full balance you're just going to get the balance of where you where you've been at your whole entire time you got you got the bounce around so <clears throat> just by that alone um we'll just open up uh these different di different uh doors to explore you know because the way i'm doing this is it's fun <laughs> I just people just uh, like putting money into one company. I, that looks so boring. That look, I know it's a boring game, but like, like this is meant for exploring. So that's where I'm at. See, Uber, been I'm definitely buying Uber. Like if it drops below, like I'm gonna watch it for a couple months. But if I can, if it's like twenty dollars or something, I'm definitely gonna snatch that up. So I'm a big. I might even snatch two, two. I don't, and that's something I've never done. Like. It's just because um, I'm out. I'm a student out in uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area. So I'm getting, um, I'm getting to know how to become a, uh, what do they call them? Bay, Bay Areans, the Bay Areans. So it's dope. I mean, California is cool. It's cool, but it's a lot of people are just. I, I think they need to go ahead and just make that, make that, uh, that jump. Cause it's still stuck like in the same, same way of living. So me being a film student out there, like I'm on vacation. I'm in South America. I'm in Colombia to be exact, and it's paradise. It's it's nice. I'm with my family. Um, gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous women out here for men. It's just you know it's not like in the states. You know here these women are very they're friendly. They'll talk like in the states. It's like awesome. <laughs> You know, like what? The, what the fuck for? Why we gotta? You know, what I'm saying like shit. We, we're like in a fucking universe, like so fucking lost, and you want to act like that? Like, come on, you know, no, don't act like that. <laughs> don't act like that. Shit, you know, get with it. So, but that's pretty much um, this. Man, this empowered me so much. And, and it gave me back my confidence to be a man again. Masculine confidence building. Also, this is what it's building. Because this is like... Um, coming from old school, like cutting grass, uh, raking leaves in the fall, uh, in the summertime. I was cutting... Oh, yeah, cutting grass. And, okay, I'm going to break it down. Like, Because I, I did it 24-7. That's what I'm used to, just thinking of ideas in for, for all four seasons. Uh, and this was in North Dakota. Why not Air Force Base? Shout out. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> shit, lost lost my train of thought. Mm, mm, mm. But anyways, let me get back onto this. Uh, this is inside my Robin Hood portfolio. Ten thousand. You hit that ten thousand, you in. You just your confidence is like okay. Let me play this game now. Look at this Dollar General. I've been wanting Dollar General. So <sighs> my watch list is sick. I might have to do a video and just going through my watch list because I'm definitely because I've noticed like <coughs> if you build these habits now, once you get a, once your income increases and your profits start coming in, you'll know how to do, 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 shoot them in, shoot them in the proper places. 
you know, give them all, give them all a fun. Your your dollars are like your soldiers. Your credit, like that's even more. That's like on some more, like specialized weapons. Like when you're when you got credit, you can get the you know the big like tanks, uh, fighter jets. So, man, all right, let's get into this amazing stuff. So that's pretty much that's my 135 assets with stock. So pretty much I own 100. I gotta change 141 assets. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six. So that's 141. Whew. I'm almost close to my um, 150. Usually when I hit like every 50 companies or assets that I obtain, I use I I celebrate. Like I just that's a day of doing whatever, you know. So, and that's all company funds. <laughs> It comes out of the company. Like, you got to give yourself rewards and punishment. That's the game I'm playing. So, people are like, you don't give yourself no punishment. And uh, no. you got to have both. It's the, the game is much fun-er that way. Because you feel it. And it motivates you. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. I'm just, I think we just got too stuck in the reward. Everything is rewards, rewards. We got to go through the, the struggle. Like, we're trying to just cut out the struggle shit and just not feel shit. Like, robots. Jesus. Huh. Let me find out. All right. So, the first asset that I purchased is Iron Mountain. Um, let me move me out the way. So, I hit my five-year. I always hit this five-year. That's how I gauge it. Just kind of just because I've been looking at like these graphs for so long. I, it's like you you start to build like when you, I can't exp It's like a skill you start to build, you know, like you find quick ways like anal analyzing like, you know, the computer's got its anal analytics and you, you also have to have yours to, you know, look at different companies without spending too much time. You know, because time is so precious. But if you're investing in anything, my thing is, if you're investing with anything in the stock market, you're already in the eighth wonder of the world. Because that game is compound interest. That's why a lot of people say they don't invest or they have somebody paying. Like, once you understand, it's going to, everything else is just going to disappear because this is going to be more of, more of your focus because it's, it's a positive. You're, you're going to, just grow with it like wow not like on the other end when you don't play this you're playing uh, that trivial um uh, the matrix i mean shit i didn't want to i didn't want to say it but like you know i like the matrix it's fun you know it's just thinking like a virtual just go in and go out like right now it's just like i'm out of that and I look at like Facebook news and I'm like, Jesus, it just feels like so much shit goes on. Like, I mean, me being, I'm a straight American, you know, there's no denying that. But I was born in the Philippines. So, but I just love, now it's just like, I, I love Earth, you know. And so it's kind of, even me, even that got me, I, I obtained that uh, mindset through investing through Robinhood. Robinhood has taught me everything. I didn't have to go to Harvard. Um, law school, uh, Harvard Business, um, all these like Ivy League type business schools, or or whether I, or I didn't have any um, family members to to like pass this knowledge on. Like I went through this like years, and now it's just like phew, the light bulb is like phew, exploding. But once you're in this world, nothing nothing else matters. Now you can do the fun shit. Like right now, um, you know I got the mic, I got the pre uh, the mic amp. That goes with this, and then um, I got my DJ back there. I'm gonna start doing DJ. Just get back into the those happy feelings again. So now it's like okay, um, investing in the stock market. You're always like, if you have this mentality, you're you're gonna flip. You're gonna flip like every seven to ten years, and then you just keep adding. Say you have fifty thousand, it flips to. Uh, it, it it doubles it so it doubles it so now you got a hundred thousand just just by playing the compound interest game so that's what got me just blew me up mentally on um 
the compound interest game. So I was like, wow. And this is what made it fun. It's like now I can do exploring. That's my my number one passion is just exploring the unknown. So this I just started diving deeper and deeper into these companies and started taking notes and um here we oh speaking of notes um inside my Robinhood portfolio I'm going I'm going to give you guys Iron Mountain Invesco Grupo Aval Hexo Glencore these are some now you see these companies my dividends my dividends buys those companies ten dollars and below so now i'm just like with each year i want to get to like where you know 50 i'm at fifty dollars so it's like um my realistic goal is to is to hit fifty dollars in dividends a year with with the with, with the foundation that i'm building I'm not building the wall I'm still building the foundation So that's why it feels like it's um, Just going so slow But I just want to build You know Get the The foundation I think I'll hit the foundation Whew Once I hit a thousand So I'm, I'm at 150 So I'm playing the little games This is like me working out Just add little by little Brick by brick So that's what I'm playing Just day by day Okay so let's jump into this uh, This is Iron Mountain I got I bought one share. Uh it's currently thirty dollars and seventy cents. So I picked up like at thirty two, down a buck thirty five. Um about let me see, they oh they don't have wow, that's the first time I came across anything and they don't have any huh, interesting. Current CEO not not listed. Employees twenty eight thousand one hundred headquarters not listed, founded, not listed. Let me let me try something right quick. It just feels too weird. No, that's what it is. Uh headquarters not listed, founded not listed, market cap 8.91 billion, PE ratio 29.97, dividend yield 7.32. That's the reason why I got off on that one. Nice. Uh buy 33%, hold 50%, sell 17%. So I just recently uh, picked up on that one. Oh, 8,746 people own Iron Mountain on Robin Hood. So it gives you that stat. And then 33% of an analysts agree that Iron Mountain is a buy. So that's my first asset added to my portfolio. The second asset that I added is Invesco. And Invesco is the owners of power shares as you can see I mean that's pretty much why I picked it up because it was the way down here but if you see the peak peaked about about $41 yeah yeah 41 so currently it's uh, $20.70 1000 and 84 people own Invesco on Robinhood. About Invesco LTD engages as an in, as an independent global investment management firm. It operates through investment management segments. The firm offers a range of single country, regional, and global capabilities across major equity, fixed income, and alternative asset classes, delivered through a diverse set of investment vehicles the company was founded in december 1935 and is headquartered in atlanta georgia the current ceo is martin l feligan employees 7459 headquarters atl i'm a fan <laughs> uh warner robins georgia houston county Ra raised Cornbread Founded in 1935 Market cap 8.01 billion P.E. ratio 10.60 Dividend yield 7.11 Nice You see You see what you do When you do a little A little deep diving You'll, you'll pick up gems out here <laughs> And I picked this one up For like 20 bucks And it's paying me A nice dividend yield Of 7.11 
they're out here and the buy is 24 percent hold 71 percent sell six percent and what got me curious about uh investcos was i was purchasing etfs from power i see i was seeing a lot of power share etfs i was liking i was like hmm so then i was look like uh, then i did a little bit of investigating to see who who owns power shares so boom investco so that's straight out from the uh the dirty so that's that atl out there oof what's the, what is the spot the variety all right so let's go to to um <clears throat> my third asset which is Grupo Aval, seven bucks, the five year, as you can see. Catching it now. Cause this is a, uh, pretty much this is a banking cartel here in Colombia. So that's why I was like, hmm, let me invest too in these countries that I'm living in and see how it feels also. It feels wonderful. Um, see, so I bought it in around like $7.68. <clears throat> About Grupo Aval Acciones y Valores SA engages in the provision of financial services and pro and products. It operates through the following segments: Banco de Bon. This is the banks that I was telling you telling you guys about, and I've and I've banked with all of them just to experiment. I've held a, like a, an account to see how American friendly they are, and pretty much the Americans came here and fucking straight shitted in this country. It sucks, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give back like a better rep. But the past of Americans being here fucked it all up. So thank you guys. Um, so there's Banco de Bogota, Banco de Occidente, Banco AV Vilas, Banco Popular, Corf, Corfi, Colombiana, and uh, and other. The Banco de Bogota. Segment offers banking services and products. The Banco de Occidente segment focuses on the corporate customers, government and government-owned entities, all and retail cons customers. Interesting. Those that that bank right there, um, they were saying if um, if I connected my um, military pension, that they would like give me a car loan house loan all that so they're very like if you're a veteran i would go with them them in uh buying colombia but like i've seen like this bank like even reading is saying it focuses on corporate customers government and government-owned entities so they'll see like oh this guy's uh, a veteran they'll work with you i've seen it i'm just like hmm i'm just still pretty much i'm still building in in the u.s uh the banco av valid Vila segment comprises of general purpose loans, payroll loans, and credit cards, and traditional line of mortgages. <clears throat> the Banco Popular segment provides financial solutions to government entities. The Corfi, Corfi Colombiana consists of equity investments, investment banking, treasury operations, and financial services. The company was founded by Luis Carlos Sar Sarmiento. Angulo on January 7th, 1994, and is headquartered in Bogota, Colombia. So that's why I got it too. Like, I'm living here, so I might as well. Global. And then when you see these banks, you're like, I own a piece of it. This is like in America. Like, so it's like when I start traveling, I'm like, oh, I own pieces in these companies already, and people are going to look at you like, damn, you, they're going to look at you like, you know, but they don't know like it's just little things that you can brick by brick and this is it's only cost me seven bucks and then i bought this with my dividends anything under 10 like these are bought with dividends so it like it gives more like more passion to it so ceo not listed employees 91 91,191 headquarters bogota colombia not founded in 1994 market cap 2.49 billion P.E. ratio 7.74. Dividend yield 5.69. And that's a nice, nice dividend yield. <clears throat> so I'm already, I just bought it and I'm pending in June. So 
Wow. Oh, 176 people own Grupo Aval on Robin Hood. So on my, I think that was the third one. One, two, two. I'm on the fourth. Company and it is Glencore. <clears throat> this is another interesting company. This is um global. Glencore is uh, about six dollars sixty three cents. Uh, Five hundred thirty five people own Glencore on Robinhood. <clears throat> about Glencore PLC engages in the production and marketing of metal, mineral, and energy in agricultural agricultural commodities it operates through the following segments metals and minerals energy products agriculture products and corporate and other the metals and minerals segment offers zinc copper lead alumina aluminum ferro alloys nickel cobalt cobalt and iron ore the energy product segment provides crude oil oil products steam coal and metal allergical coal the agriculture products segment produces wheat, corn, canola, barley, rice, oil, seeds, meals, edible oils, biofuels, cotton, and sugar. The corporate and other segment represents unallocated group-related exp expenses. Glencore was founded in 1974 and is headquartered in Bar, Switzerland. So, current CEO... Ivan Glassenberg employees 158,000 headquarters Bar Switzerland founded in 1974 market cap 44.64 billion PE ratio 14.04 dividend yield 4.70 it's another one so these are these are companies of people that are not even like <laughs> I'm just like wow you know exploring the unknown and I did it with I just if once you're not afraid of this then you'll start exploring but if you stick to a certain a certain box you're gonna stay locked up holy shit this is like whew. I'm just in my mind I'm like what if I like get to the end of this you know then I'm like okay once I get to the end now I'm like okay I'll be able to create something afterwards but I have to get to the end first okay so that's Glencore. I don't know if you guys heard about Glencore, but oh my! And another thing, why I've been thinking along the lines, like I was getting more into like precious metals, and that kind of got me thinking, like, okay, who my, who, what are the mining companies that around the world? So now I'm investing in mining companies, and my thing too, if you really think about it, in the future, like once we're exploring. Like these companies, once we start exploring space, they're going to get first dibs because they already know how to dig up dirt. They got the tools and they got the experience all on Earth. So once we start like exploring space like other planets, these mining companies are going to they're going to be around. So that's why I, that was another thing, too, that I wanted to invest in this company because I was like, this company is going to be around. You know, if they're just if that's what they do all day is, you know, mine, once we start exploring these companies are going to be the first one on there to make. And just imagine you holding a share in their company. So, and that's that's how I looked at, you know, this company were pretty much mining companies. So, but I look at the whole market like that, you know, but like, especially the mine, it kind of got me. I think once I thought, thought of that idea, then everything else was like, okay, yeah, that plus the whole market, you know, and it kind of, it that's what drew me in more. <clears throat> Okay, last but not least. Okay. Is Hexo. Let's go to the five year. Hexo is at six dollars and forty five. Oh no. Hexo is at yeah, six dollars and forty five cents. It's a lot of people. One hundred and thirty two thousand nine hundred and seventy people own Hexo on Robin Hood. 87% of analysts agree that Hexo is a buy. <clears throat> I bought in at like $7.30. $7 um, 
Market cap 1.3 billion. PE ratio not listed. Dividend yield zero. This is a I don't. This is pretty much a. What's the about? Oh, they don't even. Hexo is. I'm gonna leave you guys hanging because this is one of my spec speculative stocks. <clears throat> like how I treat Bitcoin. Like I don't go very speculative. Like the way I'm playing with these, um, I just do anything under. I'll do it ten dollars or below. So. <clears throat> So why key? Huh. So pretty much, yeah, it's not even pretty much this is a newer company. This is a, a marijuana. Future of cannabis. I just let me go, what's the about? Okay, company history. Hexo Corp is an award is an award winning consumer packaged goods cannabis company that creates and dis distributes prize winning products to serve the global cannabis market. Through its hub and spoke business strategy, X Hexo Corp is partnering with Fortune 500 companies, bringing its brand value, cannab cannabinoid isolation technology, license infrastructure, and regulatory expertise expertise to establish companies leveraging their distribution networks and capacity as one of the largest licensed cannabis companies in canada hexo corp operates with 1.8 million square feet of facilities in ontario and quebec and a foothold in greece to establish a eurozone processing production and distribute century incorporated in 2013 under the name the hydro Precaritary Corporation. The company was created to meet the needs of the Canadian medical cannabis market. With the advent of the legalized market in 2018, the company became Hexo Corp for both adult use, recreational, and medical markets. So that's Hexo. I mean, I mean, for me, it's it, yes, it's highly, it's highly speculative, but. I still like that. I like to have speculative stocks. Like people are so afraid of it. It's like taking risks. I equivalent like even my risk um, with Bitcoin. There, you have to take a risk in something. So like playing it safe and, it, I just tiptoeing. I, I just couldn't subscribe to that program. I like like to have fun. Now check out this Bitcoin. Okay, now I'm up. Uh, Three dollars sixty seven cents. So and that's that's just pretty much I just saying I got like I know what it feels like to have Bitcoin. It's just you know, now it's like oh I got thirty I had ten, now it's like I got fourteen. So it's like ooh. It's and I think it like you know, as as humans it it it, it feels motivating. Um it feels like you have your own audience. Like, you know, once you start building your own audience, like even like buying your assets, I feel like that's my audience. Then when I go out, I just I just see like, hmm, what can I invest in today? You know, what companies can make me money? And then before you know it, you're sitting on a thousand five hundred. I think once you hit five hundred companies that you own, like you're going to have a whole different mindset than everybody else because everybody else is focused on just I'm gonna say like 10 to 20 companies, and they just fill those. But I'm known just a couple YouTubers are going out of that. So, I mean, I'm like, that's all it is exploring. But then, in like the older I get, I can't. Ta I like the older you take risks, like from when you're born to when you die, you take a risk. You know, I don't know, like, cause even in old age, you're gonna get bored as fuck. You, I think in old age, you're gonna take more risks. You know, cause you're gonna take more calculated. So it's like they don't t don't take risks while you're older. I'm like shit. I'm taking risks all the time. That shit fun. I, I guess this is something that that I live with. So 
um, I've been doing this all my life. Oh, like I was saying, like my my upbringing is pretty much. I was I grew up a military brat, so my stepfather was in the Air Force, and uh, we were in Minot Air Force Base, and pretty much I grew up there like as a teenager. That's where I started learning about making money. You know, you being like a, a stepchild, you don't get the resources like you know as if you were um, blood. So I wasn't blood. I was only blood through my mom, and I don't know the story behind my mother. If she um, lied to him, saying like, yo, this is your kid. And then because I come out, I'm like, you know, I'm like, Shh. But if they would have talked about it, it just, you got, like, and that's what I'm learning now with my family. Like, we talk. Like, my son, he's going through his, you know, he's going through that that gro- that growth. Where he's starting to think for himself and, and, you know, he's just got an attitude. And it's just like, it's just part of it. But, um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, getting back to the uh, man, I always keep this story like uh, it just blows my mind. Cause now that I think about it, I'm like, I, okay, I was probably meant to meant to walk this path, this stock market path, and then now these um, cryptocurrencies. Cause like a lot of people, if you don't know how it feels, like this is where it's going. Like these, the market is still. Oh, look, my live is still going. Probably everybody like who who's not in crypto like they're in the black then it doesn't move, but pretty much I'm still this crypto moves, see so it's moving regardless. So um, oh getting back to the story of uh, my not before I close it out, um, I pretty much learned how to hustle. Um, I was I started out. Uh, knocking on doors that was the that was the first fear I had to get over just knocking on a door and confronting that person that comes to it whoever they are confronting them and then you got to ask for it you got to ask for the service like that's what I'm getting back to now I'm going back to that mentality as a kid and I'm bringing it back now to where I'm at today so and I've noticed like I can feel it the joy the joy as a kid I'm like man that was fun I would knock on doors in the summertime find grass that was tall and go straight for those houses and ask them you know if, and I have the lawn all clean I always came with a clean lawn my, mom, my mother taught me that just have look clean and people will just take you more serious so she taught me like just to be clean just clean up clean your appearance and that's pretty much half that's pretty much like 80% of your cell right there it's just the look, so. So I would knock in the summer. Um, I had other, uh, um, other ideas like I would see sidewalks that they had or driveways that was like dirty. Like I would um, knock on doors and I, I would look for like dirty driveways and sidewalks and knock on the door and and ask them, um, you know, if they would like the the sidewalk driveway swept. And then another, this this is like. When I when the lawnmower is down, I had to resort to other ideas. So I was like, okay, let me try to do do some sweeping, get that money, and then pay for the damages, you know. Or, you know, with the sweeping, collect that money and then buy another lawnmower. Uh, whatever uh, phase I was going through, because I I went through so many. Um, and then I went, uh, in the winter time, pop pop pop, just pretty much with the uh, the hat. The I can't think of the. Um, the bakla, like all you see is your eyes, boom, boom, boom. I mean, I would, like the the snow would be so high, me trying to walk. I mean, man, I I'm thinking back now, like that's why I keep when I keep bring getting to this the, this place. I just had the most, I had the bad and good. I mean, there was like, you you talking about learning? It, it taught me a lot. So. <clears throat> So I would knock on these doors in the win, like these doors in the winter, shovel snow. So I was making money in the summertime, the winter, the fall, the spring. So my summer summer gig was cutting grass. Uh, fall was raking leaves. <clears throat> oh yeah, I would do the rake leaves. The winter was shoveling snow, and then spring was more the sweeping. So sweeping slash start cutting grass, but. You know, people like wait for the spring, but then you had other people that was 
ready for their grass to look good and clean. So I would always pinpoint that. And then I moved on. I started collecting baseball cards and baseball cards, football cards, soccer cards. There was like tops, Fleer, Upper Deck. Those three, like I was on it. I had a Beckett's book. I tried to get all into that. Um, and then pretty much my art was Garbage Pail stickers. So I don't know if you guys remember. Let me show you guys Garbage Pail stickers. Holy shit, man. I mean, like, the art that we were learning in the school to me was boring. Garbage. Pale. Come on. Here we go. I don't know if you guys remember these Garbage Pail stickers. But that was my art. And I, I I used to collect those. Man, I used to hustle and then run to the store and collect. Donald Trump's got a uh, atom bomb. I remember my atom atom bomb. Damn, I might have to get back into this. Um, but it 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 made my summers fun. This made my summers fun collecting these garbage pill stickers. And it's pretty much like we just trade like at school, but that was something fun. So. What other things? That was pretty. That's pretty much it. Like I just wanted to share you, share that story with you guys. Like, you know how I came up. You know, living in Minot, in North Dakota, Air Force Base. Huh. I might have to do some editing where. Yeah, I gotta practice more of my editing. Start putting in, uh, more B roll. You know, let you guys see like more. Explanations like, because I've noticed like the way. YouTube is set up now like they're doing more B-roll um, B-roll type uh, integrations into their editing so but yeah this is pretty much a lifelong journey to learn I mean this all these companies that are in, in the stock market there's more there's thousands and just to have a thousand you're gonna be on a whole nother <laughs> whole nother mind frame Until next time, this is the eighth wonder of the world, compound interests. Peace.